welcome back to Grim the Lord of Salt. Reviewing today, Mortal Kombat 11. I finally finished this fucking game. It's only taken me four years playing it on and off because I really hated playing it. This is uh, was my least favorite game in a long time. And um, it was my least favorite Mortal Kombat ever. So, getting myself to, to grind it out was a bit of a pain. Why did I grind it out, you ask? Well, I'm a fan. I'm a fan and I can't help myself. I, uh, you know, and I, I bought it, you know, like I paid for it. And I, I pre-ordered it. I wanted Shao Kahn. I had some hopes for it, not super high, because I wasn't the biggest fan of MKX, or Mortal Kombat 10, whatever you want to call it. Or, uh, you know, I wasn't... I liked the reboot from 2009. But I didn't like a lot of the, the way it went, and I was a little worried, and rightfully so. MKX let me down a lot, and this game let me down so much more uh, in so many aspects. But um, I'm done. I finally did it. I got into Shang Tsung's throne room here. I got all the decapitated heads. Uh, to get those one, each of those heads, you had to do 25 fatalities to that character. But you, it's, that's not as simple as it sounds. It has to be in the towers mode. You can't do it uh, single player, or you can't do it uh, offline, right? You can't do it in the versus mode, you can't do it in practice. Like, the cheesy way would be, if you'd imagine it, you'd go to the practice menu, right? The practice fatalities, and you just practice 25 fatalities on each of those characters. It used to be 50. They nerfed it because people complained, and I'm still complaining because 25 is still a lot. There's 25 base characters in the game, so you're talking about basically having using every character to do a fatality to every other character and that's a nasty permutation in the end <laughs> but and it has to be in towers mode where all the battles are randomly selected right so it's uh... and that makes it hard and what's worse is if you got the DLC like I did being the nut and the fanboy and buying the season passes and, and got all the DLC none of the DLC characters count so you know they almost doubled the size of the roster with the DLC and downloadable content and so now your chances, which were already randomized to start with, go down by almost half because of the downloadable content, because you're wasting your time working on those. It just wound up being significantly more, and what's worse, uh, when I did finally get into the throne room and the treasury, uh, which are these last areas here, uh, they didn't have any of the stuff I was looking for. Uh, not that it, I specifically, that's not to say there's bad stuff here, uh, it's, it's probably worth working towards because you can, uh, you get extra intros and outros which are cool I like the intros and outros you get some nice gear you know which is it's hard to get gear so uh and so it's, it's good loot but uh what I was hoping to get because uh there are a number of classic costumes that are in the game now the ones you buy for DLC you get those you don't get the gear I mentioned before I got the ninja deal downloadable content for the MK2 ninja outfits you know because like I said I'm a fanboy I'm a sucker and I like those outfits. I wanted to see them in HD. So uh, I got them. You get Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Noob Saibot. Now Noob Saibot was fine. Scorpion and Sub-Zero, however, were missing their masks. Uh, because their retro masks were already in the game. So you had to unlock them. And to unlock them, you had to go through the uh, the gauntlet. The gauntlet's a bitch of a mode. And, uh, <laughs> you know, a couple rounds before the, where they actually give you the two masks is... Uh, there's a fight with Shao Kahn where he has the status effect where it comes and goes on a timer and when it's active he'll kill you in two hits so <laughs> it's you have to beat that Shao Kahn it's, that, that held me up for a long time and even immediately after getting those two masks um, they hit me with another the other part of the gauntlet where in order to get through you're fighting in a, an arena that's been poisoned there's poison gas and you have to complete it with a double flawless Right, you have to get a perfect victory. So, just poison gas draining your health, and you're not supposed to get. Yeah, fuck, fuck that gauntlet mode. Fuck the towers of time. Fuck this game. <laughs> um. So yeah, I, I went through all that to get the mask, so I could finally have my classic. And those are the ones I paid for. You know, my real money went into that. And speaking of real money, uh, a lot of the costumes I got, you can't get in this game at all. There's actually costumes you cannot unlock. Uh, they can only become available through the store and random. They'll randomly, they have a store that pops up with random stuff you can get. Outfits, sometimes you'll get a pack. Uh, but it's, it's all randomized who's up there and what they got. 
And the, so there's some that you can only get through that, like, uh... Take Melina, okay? She's a DLC character. She wasn't in the base roster. Uh, the base roster, female ninjas had classic attires that were released as DLC that came complete, right? Uh, so Melina wasn't part of that because she wasn't in the game yet. But they do have classic costumes for Melina, but they're not in the game. You have to find them randomly popped up on the store, and you have to buy them with crystals. Crystals you buy with real money. Microtransactions which people have been telling me I'm full of shit don't exist in this game, they do. You have to buy crystals if you want that classic Melina costume in this game to see it in HD, right? <laughs> this is the kind of bullshit I'm talking about. There's some that have never even popped back up on there. There was, they, they put in like the Deception Scorpion and the uh, Sub-Zero, right? From this Mortal Kombat Deception along with uh, the Human Frost before she became a cyborg, classic Frost. That was a three-pack. You can see it on the store. You can't buy it. Uh, I guess it was, it was a promotional thing. And it's supposed to pop up on the in-game store every now and then. I haven't seen it at all. So those are three costumes you just can't get. And they're, they're actual game costumes, you know? So like I said, the fan in me would love to be able to use those costumes in this game. I literally cannot. And, and it's the same with some of these other costumes. They had great in-game costumes. Classic Luke Kang, classic... Johnny Cage, classic Raiden looked fantastic, right? You want Shao Kahn to look like Shao Kahn again? That was one of my biggest hang-ups about, you know, I pre-ordered to get Shao Kahn. I was like, I gotta get him. And then, you know, they revealed him. I was like, that's, what, who the fuck is that? That's not Shao Kahn at all. And they have his classic attire in there, so at least he looks a little closer to actual Shao Kahn. He still feels like a rip-off, but, <laughs> you know, and so it was a lot of work trying to get that, and, uh, the actual costume, the outfit, the skin. I got the gear, but the skin is listed with these other ones. They're part of what's called uh, character event chests. Okay, so what happens is every two weeks, there's a character chest that pops up in the crypt. It's a, uh, a cryosphere uh, for Krona, whatever. And um, in that chest is one of these specific items. It's the same with Jax if you want his classic. You can buy the DLC to get MK3 Jax, but not his arms. His actual classic bio arms, the mechanical ones. If you want those, it's one of these character events. So it has to happen to be the random one of that two-week period, and then you can go into the crypt, and if you have the money, uh, you can hunt it down and open it. Right? And and all these classic costumes are set up that way. So it's... It's, it's such a kick in the dick, because it tells you in the game that these costumes are in the crypt. And after checking the entire crypt, head to toe, cause I actually like the crypt on its own. Uh, exploring Shang Tsung's dilapidated island with traps and puzzles, that was actually a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. And all, and all the lore that they built into that, it was cool, it was fun. But, um, <laughs> except for the heads. The heads took what, they were, that was ridiculous having to do 25 fatalities, it should be 10. Okay, 10 fatalities, and you should be able to do it in versus mode. Alright, I can understand not doing the practice mode, that's cheesy, but I should be able to, if I really just wanted to crank it out, just do that in versus. It's not so bad, though, if you use the uh, combat, the classic towers, they're called. You can use those. You just look for whoever's on the bottom if it's a, it's a person you need. That's the way to cheese your way through that. And uh, that way you know, like, oh, that's a DLC character, I'm not going to bother. And what happens is every time after you beat them, you, you press uh, circle or the exit button to exit the tower. And it, the tower stays the same as long as you don't exit the tower boat. So you can keep refighting that first fight over and over and over again until you get enough fatalities on that character to move, to get their head, and you can move on to the next character. And that's how the the most convenient way I found to get the heads. It's a lot easier once you realize it's there. It's still a lot of work. Like I said, it should be 10 heads instead of 25 or 50, all that bullshit. But um, it's still a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. Um. I thought, because they said they were in the crypt, that all these classic skins must be in Shang Tsung's throne room, right? Because I checked the whole crypt from top to bottom, and I, I couldn't find them. And then, uh, you know, I finally gained access to Shang Tsung's throne room, and they're not in there. I mean, they have, for, you, you do get good stuff for getting the heads, and you do get good stuff in Shang Tsung's throne room. You get intros, outros, um, and uh, like I said, a lot of gear. The heads will get you some nice skins, just not the classic skins. If you're a fan, you're looking for the classic you got to do these character events, which are bullshit. And one of them's in the, the throne room, too, so I would have had to do that anyway.
but I gotta keep and the, here's the other thing you don't know what character event is just triggered the game doesn't tell you it used to notify people it doesn't anymore now if you want to be notified of it you have to have you have to know someone on social media who's who's actively keeping track of that and posting it for people every every couple of weeks they say it's easy like oh just go to the forums it'll say it's not that fucking easy like like they don't up those they don't update those a lot so you need someone who keeps up with it and this is again four years after this fucking game came out to let you know when this limited bullshit comes out what are they going to do when the new game comes out you know are they going to shut down the servers or is this still going to be bullshit are, the, are these skins just never going to be obtainable classic rain they added rain as dlc i happen to get a like a light purple version of it. it looks pink but you know, i got it because it's classic rain you know because i'm a fanboy i like ninjas so i got classic rain i got classic melina their colors are a little off but uh <laughs> and i and i paid for that with real money i bought crystals I could buy those skins. Fucking skins. Oh, and you want to play Unmasked fucking Scorpion? Forget that shit. Co-op towers. Right? It has to be a random reward in the Towers of Time co-op towers. Which requires you to play online. You have to be online. You have to play with other people. You have to win. So, fuck that shit. And the... So the, and I, I also wanted to post this review because the new one's been announced is actually coming out in about a month from now a little over a month I'm not looking forward to it I didn't want to get it I was determined not to get it because I hated this one so much that I was done with Mortal Kombat I was like that's it you know they can't sucker me back into it they fucking sucker me back in playing all my fucking hey it's my own fault I'm a stupid fanboy right I mean I haven't done anything yet but I'm gonna I'm gonna pre-order that stupid thing because Shang Tsung is the pre-order bonus Shang Tsung is one of my favorite characters so I pre-ordered the little this one for Shao Kahn. I'm gonna pre-order the next one for fucking Shang Tsung. And the, even though the story mode's gonna suck, I already know because it's the same writers that did this one. It's gonna be bullshit like this one was, uh, like MKX was, right? Um, <laughs> it's it's gonna be awful. The gameplay looks solid, right? I mean, they they brought back tag team game and that's nice. Um, I'm sure competitive gamers could give you a more in-depth analysis. But, you know, I'll be fucking happy if, uh, if it just runs right. And it does. And they, they, they're good fighting games, the Mortal Kombat. They're just shitty stories. And, and some of the character designs are great. The voice acting's all good. But, uh, you know, presentation is generally good. Uh, a lot of it was a step back from X, though. I mean, basic graphics, yeah, were a big upgrade in animations. But a lot of the little things, you know, battle damage is gone. I think that was actually gone in, in MKX. I miss battle damage. That was battle damage was awesome, and it would have been great to see battle damage on guys like Terminator and RoboCop and shit, right? And uh, and they fucked up. They they didn't bring that back. There was a lot of unplayable characters in this one that are in the game. You know the cyborgs and shit, cyborg ninjas. Yeah, it's fucked that. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, the the dialogue, the pre-fight dialogue, which I know is kind of cheesy to even care about, right? But it actually has become kind of a, a signature feature of. Uh, NetherRealm Studios fighter games now, right? In, in this and Injustice, um, people make recordings of all the dialogue and, and they enjoy it. And it's a fun part of it. They, they fucked it up in this one. MKX, they had unique dialogue for characters based on certain costumes they might be wearing, right? The, um, the Revenant versions would obviously, they would act evil because they're Revenants, right? So you get Revenant dialogue. It wasn't just a voice filter, it was the actual conversation change. It's not so in this one. Whether you're playing as Evil Raiden or Good Raiden, he's going to act like Good Raiden. If you're playing as the Revenant version or the normal version of a character, you're going to get the normal dialogue. So Liu Kang's going to act like Liu Kang, even if he's supposed to be evil. He's still just going to be Liu Kang. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, it was a lot of little steps back. They, they removed the parrying feature in this game. I wasn't happy about it. I know a lot of competitive gamers like it because they love to juggle people, right, and to have them have no defenses against it. That's the whole point. You know, once you get locked in that combo, you're you're fucked competitively, and it's back to being that now. And as a casual gamer, it's disappointing because, yeah, occasionally when you got tougher missions and you're getting bounced around, you you got no defense and it sucks. So, but you know, like I said, a lot of little things removed, it's a, and overall some nice things added. Uh, story modes kept going downhill, worse and worse. Or so, and I, and I don't care about the story of MK1, right? Uh, but like I said, they cheesed me back in, not just because of Shang Tsung, alright? Shang Tsung, on his own, wasn't enough. They announced that way in the beginning. Uh, but it was when they started showing footage, and, uh, 
They're they're really catering. They're they're pandering to the uh, to the old school fans now because they got uh, Sonya and Kano in their M classic, very classic MK1 outfits. Okay, very retro. They've got Jax finally MK2 Jax represented in the game. Um, even the reboot didn't really do Jax like with his normal arms. He always had you know something on there. So uh, Jax is back, and uh, and that kind of stuff has me excited. Otherwise, it looks the same though. The gameplay is identical. Uh, again, if there's competitive gamers, could probably give you a better analysis of that. But it looks like the same game. It looks good, but it also doesn't look like it's changed. So I'm guessing it's going to have time crystals, right? You're going to have to fucking play the the microtransaction game. It's going to have some kind of crypt with random chests where all the stuff, the, all the skins to unlock is. You know, they're going to do all the skin bullshit again. Um, so it's going to be loot crates. Loot crates and microtransactions. And, and to get the actual costumes that matter, you know, they'll probably put some nice ones in there. But they're, they're going to make you, they're going to make you work like a bitch for them. You know, you're going to have to pay real money. Then you're going to have to do some random event. You're going to have to keep checking every single day to see if it's fucking there. You know, that kind of bullshit. So it's, I'm, I'm not looking forward to going through more of that. Um, what I can say is that I feel like I've got, uh, it's good to see some retro costumes are default now. You know, I kind of like that. It's, uh, that's going to save me some trouble. I already had MK1 versions of Sony and Kano. They did them in MKX. And, uh, you know, so I had that. <laughs> but I guess it don't hurt to have more. Um, so, yeah. And all of this is also building up to my original. My very first YouTube project was a Mortal Kombat project. I was trying to turn all the story modes into, like, a, a TV series. Like, you could sit down and watch without ads was a big thing. You can catch... You can watch the cutscenes online. But, um, two things. One, they're not going to have any action. Because it's just going to be the dialogue. It's just the cutscenes. Um, in my edited version, I was going to add extra fights to it. Using the newer games to kind of recreate classic fights, you know, was the original idea. Um, so, yeah, there was that. And, um, and then mine wasn't going to have ads. Every other compilation, they don't have fights. It's only dialogue, and they're loaded with ads. And they... they these people who, who aren't making their own content. They're just recording cutscenes, right? It's the laziest form of content there is. And they monetize it as much as they can. They're not getting any money. It's all going to NetherRealm Studios or whoever owns the license for maybe some of the older games. But it's that's they're the ones getting the money, and but they still they max those ads. I could understand if they, if they kept it to a minimum, right? Like a, an ad at the beginning and then a skippable one and then that's it they don't do that they load it with ads and they force you to watch them all and it's bullshit and I hate it and so I wanted to do my own that was free of ads that uh, that had the action in it and that had the, the dialogue and it was a total package and covered the whole series you know I wanted to do um, that's how I wanted to do it so I do want to revisit that project that's what I've been working towards that's why I've been trying to get them classic costumes so I can use them for this project right so, um, here's another example of a Revenant talking like normal, normal Kung Lao, right? It's, it's, it's bullshit. And Scorpion is another example. You get the voice filter, but there's one Scorpion, and he's going to talk like Scorpion. In MKX, if you were playing as the unmasked Hanzo Hisashi, um, not only was his voice different, but his, his dialogue was there. He had different interactions with people because he was a different character. Right, and he's the same character, but because in story he's different, he's not a a specter anymore. He's not from the Nether Realm. He's human again. His humanity's restored, so you get different dialogue with him. Um, but not in this game. In this game, it's there's one Scorpion, there's one Kung Lao. You get all the same dialogue, right? The the only cool part about this game, that wise, is when they made the movie pack, and they brought back the actors to do the voices. Uh, you know, Christopher Lambert as, as Raiden is awesome. I love him. He's one of my favorite actors. Uh, whether he's Highlander, whether he's Raiden, whatever. Um, it's It was good to have them. And that's that's like the peak of it. But otherwise, uh, it's kind of lame in that respect. Anyways, um, back to... Yeah, I'm going to revisit this. And I'm going to do it a little differently. Originally, I used uh, Shaolin Monks 
and uh, some of the older animations like The Journey Begins, which was a special animated feature they did to promote the movies back in the day. I like The Journey Begins because uh, it was it was pretty authentic to the old school designs. Well, even though it was super cheesy, really cheap animation, kind of horrible actually as a movie, but I, I enjoyed it as a fan because of the, the classic designs were there, you know. Um, but I think this time around there there have been fan projects that have added voice work to the original comics that John Tobias did. I think I'll go with those and add fights to those and kind of reenact the tournaments again using the different games. But again, it looks like MK1, which is also covering their version of these events, um, is also going to be covering that as well. So I'll probably be using that to enhance some stuff as well, which means I have to wait for it to come out. Um, I don't have a PlayStation 5, so I'm going to have to get it on PC. I was planning anyway on upgrading my PC. It's, it's time to get the new processor. I need it. So to be playing these new games, I will be getting the processor for... The PC, I'll be doing Mortal Kombat on that instead. Um, I actually did get MKX at one point. I played a little bit of it, uh, or MK11, I mean, on the PC, and it ran just fine because I was hoping to hack it because I didn't want to. I didn't want to do this bullshit where I can't get the the good skins, but um, it didn't. It didn't. Supposedly, there's ways to do it. People talk about save state hacking and all that. I have save state editors, whatever game file editors. I haven't been able to get any of that to work, so. Um, all I can do is call shenanigans on it <laughs> and work towards it the old-fashioned way and then ultimately just give up on it because they just they didn't make it available um, you know it's it is what it is and I'll I guess I'll wait for MK1 uh, so I can get some authenticity out of that as well some retro stuff and uh, it'll all come together and it should be very cool when it is. Uh, in the meantime, I should be collecting footage as well when I'm offline doing stuff. Um, so I just thought I'd go over all that with you guys. MK11 sucked. It still sucks uh, as a fan. Just trying to unlock shit and then ultimately finding out you literally can't. They make it un unlockable and that's absolute horseshit. Everything should be unlockable and it should be reasonably unlockable. And you should be able to do it offline. You shouldn't have to have, if, if my internet connection goes out, you know, I should not be able to get that fucking content. So bad. Anyway, that's, that's my rant for the day, guys. I hope you found this video informative, at least a little bit. Uh, Story-wise, I know I mentioned I don't like these stories. If for, uh, for reference, um, I still think the best MK stories are the original ones by John Tobias. If you want to look up those motion comics on online, you can. I would absolutely recommend it, but even compared to stuff like Shaolin Monks and uh, Armageddon, I think had better stories than this. I think the uh, for a closer reference, I would say watch the newer animated features done by Warner Brothers. They do better stories with the same kind of material, and um, and and the, uh, the the live action series that they last did. Um, I can't remember, Mortal Kombat Legends, I think that was what it was called. Uh, that also did a much better job of presenting the Mortal Kombat story. The only thing I think is worse than these current games is uh, probably the newest live-action film. Um, the old live-action films were cheesy, but you know I, I enjoy those more than the crap I get out of these newer games. And uh, and that's that's the comparison sake. You know, if you want to... If you... If you you know, there's nothing wrong with liking the story or being okay with it, whatever. Um, but for my reference, if you want to know why I don't like it, consult those other things. Watch those animated WBs, watch Legends, right? And that'll let you know what Mortal Kombat can be capable of as a story platform. You know, one of the things that attracted me to this series in the first place was the character, badass character designs and the story and the lore that was attached to it. And unfortunately, that all came from John Tobias. And uh, he had just started digging into the lore when he uh, when he quit the series for creative differences. And uh, the the crew that came in after him picked up tried to pick up where he left off as best they could. They tried to build on the lore. They tried to to improve from there. And you know they didn't do quite as good, but they didn't do terribly. People can criticize the 3D game MK games all they like, gameplay wise. I won't disagree. Uh, but story wise, those games were fantastic. And um, even if they were cheesy at times, they were still good. They explored 
the the mythology rather than shitting all over it like these new games do. You know the whole Khan thing. I hate it. Kotal Khan, uh, Katana Khan. He wasn't a ruler because he was a Khan. He was the Emperor Shao Khan. Before him was the Dragon King, right? Onaga was the Dragon King. These were the titles of the rulers. King, Emperor, not Khan. He wasn't Onaga Khan, right? Shao Khan wasn't just Shao before he became Khan, right? It's bullshit. Uh, that's, that's, that's shitting all over the lore. That's what they do. You know, they do it all the time in these newer games. And it, it irritates me being a fan. And it's, it's, look, I get the whole multiverse thing. I get the alternate timelines, parallel dimensions. If you're going to change things, you have to make sure it's better than the original. That's the standard rule, right? If you're going to step all over the lore, you have to improve it. Objectively improve it. Because subjectivity is it's not going to get you anywhere. Right? You think your story is better but you have shitty taste so <laughs> most people are gonna find that yeah it's a shitty story especially when there's other stuff to compare it to like the animated features and legends okay so yeah um if you can't do better stick to the original right it's that simple they should have brought back john tobias they never will <laughs> but that's the only way i think mk is going to get back to being as good as it was story-wise gameplay it's still good character design still good uh, but the the bullshit fan service you gotta unlock things for the the bullshit stories um, and the gameplay really is just more of the same like I could k just keep playing the 2009 reboot for the rest of my life you know and I'd be happy <laughs> they, they sucker me in and uh, and I mean the fanboy stupid fanboy fall for it every time uh, and I'm, I'm probably gonna do it again uh, but at least with, uh, you know, new versions of the original cast and retro versions and all that, at least I'll have the opportunity to flesh out my project a little better. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. This is the Lord of Salt being salty as ever and uh, grim. I will catch you guys next time. Until then, enjoy the rest of the fight and take it easy. Fatality.